Chair Midim Camp, it was the fifth day of our wilderness training. Rai looked around, stroking her chin. Living out here wouldn't be so bad, Hyo. I agreed with her statement. The remnants of a roasted wild boar and eaten fish scores littered the ground, and a makeshift bed made from gathered grass caught our eyes. Various other tools and contraptions had been made for our convenience. Crude as they were, these devices served their purpose well. Locke had been responsible for creating all of these. When preparing for wilderness training, we had the option to bring a few tools with us. I had never been camping before, so I had only brought a few books to study and a couple of temporary scrolls. Luna had done similarly, while Rai hadn't brought anything at all. All. But Locke was different. He had packed an array of tools necessary for survival, from mundane items like rope to more advanced tools such as a hammer. As a result, our experience felt more like a relaxing camping trip than a test of survival. Rai glanced at the various tools before looking at Luna. Luna. Let's go wash up by the river. Flo. Oh, sure. Let's go together. Luna, who had been reading a book, looked up with a bright smile in response. One notable change during our camping adventure was that Rai and Luna had become much closer. It was nearly impossible not to bond after spending five days together in a place like this. I watched Luna and Rai head towards the river, then stood up. Hey, Locke, I'm going to take a walk around the area, I write. With that, I rose and headed into the forest. It was time to start preparing. Yeniel would be coming to assassinate me soon. I wasn't sure how it would happen. In the game, the events unfolded from Ivan's perspective, so I didn't know the process leading to the assassination attempt. However, I did know one fact. When Yeniel tried to assassinate Rudy Astria, Ivan discovered the plot and stopped Yeniel. As a result, the assassination failed instead, even defeated Yeniel and uncovered her true identity. For the subsequent events to proceed correctly, this storyline needed to play out. play out. All I needed to do was hold out until Even arrived. As long as I kept that in mind, there shouldn't be any major issues. But I absolutely could not lose. Defeat would mean certain death. My goal was to hold out until Even arrived. Then feign defeat. Even would then step in and win against Yenail. With these thoughts in mind, I surveyed the surroundings, familiarizing myself with the terrain. I needed to find a spot that was good for holding out during a fight, with minimal variables, and easily discoverable by others. I searched for such a location. Him. This seems like the best spot. I found a sunny area with few trees as I looked around. There weren't many trees, so it would be difficult for people to hide, and the lack of slopes made it less prone to surprises. Should we settle here then? What are you settling here for? I quickly turned my head at the sudden voice and prepared to cast a spell. Whose, when I looked behind me, I saw a familiar face, a woman with her red hair neatly tied up. Astina, Senior. Astina was smiling behind me. You seem to be doing better than I thought. You look fine. Astina joked with a smile, and I responded with a faint smile. Thanks to Locke, I've been able to live comfortably. Locke. That guy grew up under the Northern Marquis, so he has plenty of experience in situations like this. He's probably been through worse. The Northern Marquis. Is she talking about Locke's father? Do you know the Northern Marquis? I've only heard stories. What about the others? They're resting at the base camp over there. Would you like to see them? No, I didn't come to see their faces then. I couldn't help but wonder. But how did you get here? Shouldn't you be in the center of the forest? Normally, second year student council members would be waiting in the building at the center of the forest. They were usually just hanging out there. But they were also prepared for any unforeseen circumstances. I had to deal with an unpleasant situation, an unpleasant situation. As I expressed my curiosity, Astina answered, Someone has infiltrated the forest, infiltrated. It was just one person, but some of the student council members and professors are currently investigating. Upon hearing this, I could feel danger approaching. The tension that had loosened for a while started to tighten around me again, however. 
part of me felt relieved that the story was progressing just like the game. There haven't been any major issues, so we're continuing as planned. But if anything happens, we're ready to stop immediately. You guys should be careful too. If something happens, use the summoning stone to call the professors. Understood. I nodded in response to Astina's words. It doesn't look like there's anything here, so I'll be going. Good luck. With that, Astina waved and disappeared into the forest. Intruder. It must have been a member of the rebels, at least. It seemed like things were unfolding as expected. I couldn't let my guard down tonight. With that thought in mind, I returned to where everyone was. As night fell, Prudy, right? I took a long nap today, so if you're tired, wake me up early today. Ray and I were assigned the first night watch, followed by Locke and Luna. Luna. Once Locke and Luna had fallen asleep, Ray looked at me. He, I'm going to sleep too. If anything happens, wake me up. Ray said that before lying down, but I grabbed her wrist and forcibly pulled her up. Get up, love. Nothing's going to happen. Even if a few monsters show up, you can handle them alone. Get up now. I continued to pull her up and pester her until she grumbled and sat back down. Sigh. I should have paired up with Locke for tonight's watch. If I left it to him, I could sleep peacefully. Don't try to cut corners. I wouldn't have minded letting her rest a little under normal circumstances. But today, I couldn't allow it. In the current situation, when we didn't know what threats might come, it would be too difficult to protect everyone on my own. After some bickering, we silently stared at the fire. Then, Ray opened her mouth. Luna's a good kid, and she smiled. She's so kind it's almost foolish. I'm glad we rescued her. Ray wore a contented smile as she looked at the sleeping Luna. I never thought I could make a friend, but somehow, I did. Ray echoed Luna's sentiments. Luna, who thought she couldn't be friends with those of higher status, and Ray who couldn't make friends because of her. High status, they had opposite yet similar situations. Things will be more fun when we return to the academy. Russell while Rai was talking, we heard movement from the bushes behind us, however, we couldn't see anything from where we were. Is it just an animal? Rai tilted her head and asked. I slowly began to feel a sense of danger. Was it Yenil? I'll go take a look. All right. Be careful, Ray cheerfully waved at me. Don't fall asleep, keep your eyes wide open. <sniffs> yep, got it. I approached the playful Ray and grabbed her shoulder, speaking seriously. Stay alert, if anything happens, shout loudly and use the summoning stone to call the others. Why are you suddenly like this? As I spoke seriously, she frowned, sensing that the atmosphere was unusual. Right now, there's an intruder in this forest. I'm worried about potential dangers, so follow my instructions. An intruder. Ray's expression darkened abruptly. Should we wake up Lona and Locke and have them come with us? I shook my head at Ray's suggestion. That scenario shouldn't happen. First, it was essential to create a connection between Evan and Yenil. Later, the key to stopping the rebels would lie in that relationship. So... I had to go on an adventure to help establish a connection between Yenil and Ivan. Of course, it wasn't a life-threatening adventure. I wasn't that weak, and with the summoning stone, I planned to use it if things got too dangerous. I'll just scout the situation and come back. If something happens, I'll shout for help, and you can come to my aid. How about taking an elemental with you? Then you won't be able to protect yourself. Just have the elementals guard the perimeter for now. When I said that, Ray nodded slightly and opened her mouth. Be careful. I listened to Ray's farewell and slowly walked towards the bushes. At night, I used magic to create light, brightening my field of vision. If someone attacked from a blind spot, I'd be powerless. So, it was crucial to make it as bright as possible to improve visibility then. I cautiously moved to the location I had seen earlier. Astina said there was only one intruder. This meant that not all the rebels around here had moved yet. In the game's current state, numerous rebels were lurking around this forest. They were planning to assassinate me and, amid the chaos, ambush the students and professors as they fled the forest, assassinating right through a surprise attack. That was the grand scheme they had in mind. Rustleby reached out in the direction of the moving sound. 
I saw a rabbit passing through the bushes. A rabbit. I immediately made a judgment upon seeing the rabbit. There was someone here. I suddenly noticed a black object approaching. I quickly threw my body to the side to avoid it. Ugh. Rabbits are nocturnal creatures. It's unusual for them to be active at dawn like this. I quickly stood up and focused on the dark figure approaching me, a masked individual with a slender build. There was no doubt. It was Yenil. The person gave me no chance to react, charging towards me again, however. I had prepared something this time. When Cutter. I instantly cast my spell at the attacker. They ducked swiftly to avoid my magic. Immediately after, they leaped forward. forward. Such a large movement was bound to leave openings. Charging right after dodging my attack was the exact response I had anticipated. I hadn't been wasting my time even after midterms. I also studied how to counter Yuniel. Locke had been my training partner, though assassins and swordsmen were undoubtedly different. I believed their fundamental movements were similar, so he asked him for a duel. After a few matches, I had a decent grasp of the fundamentals. To gain the upper hand against my opponent, I needed to induce their carelessness and predict their movements. Since the assassin was in the dark, they'd likely feel at an advantage and be off guard. The question was, how could I predict their next action? After much thought, I came to one conclusion. There was no need to predict. All I had to do was lead their movements myself, to manipulate their actions. I relied on this tactic. Dodging small spells and baiting a charge towards me, it was the easiest movement to provoke, especially when the opponent was in a hurry. It was even easier to induce. I recalled my practice sessions, magic I had practiced while enduring pain. I shouted at Yenil as she charged at me. Abyssal flame, a black flame shot from my hand. Arf. Yenil tried to dodge the flame, but she couldn't avoid it completely. The flame hit her arm squarely, and she rolled on the ground, severely injured. Elf. Elf. Yenil let out a faint groan, gritting my teeth. I got back on my feet and reached out to the fallen Yenil, preparing my magic in anticipation of his return. But Yenil didn't move. So, I looked at the fallen Yenil with a baffled expression. What? What's going on? I was flustered. I didn't let my guard down and continued to watch Yenil. But there was no movement, no way, right? Could it be? Oh, I stared at Yenil like that for a few minutes. Finally, I came to a conclusion. That's right. I had defeated Yenil in one move. No, I had used this combination technique against Locke too, and he had handled it well. Even when he was attacked, he had been prepared to counter immediately. Of course, the magic I used then wasn't Abyssal Flame, but still. Even so, it wasn't supposed to end after just one hit. Was it? Ah, I didn't come here thinking I'd win. But somehow, I won in a single round. I was dumbfounded. Yes. Is she dead? As I approached Yenil, it seemed she was still breathing, her back rising and falling. I stood silently, staring at the fallen Yenil. What should I do now? Of course, I had put in tremendous effort to become stronger and adapt to this situation. That's why I learned dark magic. I heard that dark magic was powerful, but I didn't know it would be this strong. The difference between abyssal flame and ordinary fire magic was the amount of pain inflicted. While ordinary fire magic caused burns, abyssal flame inflicted immense pain upon the person hit. Although it didn't cause severe physical damage, it was a technique that delivered a mental shock due to the pain. It seemed Yenil had fainted from the agony. Yenil. Suddenly, a voice rang out from somewhere. It was Evan's voice. He must have been searching for the suddenly vanished Yenil. Just like in the game's story, hearing that voice, I made a decision. Let's run away. <laughs> Leaving Yenil behind, I returned to where everyone else was. I hope Evan finds her.